Hi guys, later this week you guys are going to be doing a, a explication of the poem The Runaway Slave at Pilgrim's Point. So I'm going to go ahead and read it to you guys and you can read along in your books. Um, it'll help you to better understand it if you can hear it as you read. I stand on the mark beside the shore of the first white pilgrim's bended knee where exile turned to ancestor and God was thanked for liberty. I have run through the night, my skin is as dark. I bend my knee down on this mark. I look on the sky and the sea. O oh, pilgrim souls, I speak to you. I see you come proud and slow. From the land of the spirits, pellas do, and the round and round me you go. O oh, pilgrims, I have gasped and run all night long from the rips of one who in your names works sin and woe. And thus I thought that I would come and kneel here where you knelt before and feel your souls around me hum in undertone to the ocean's roar and lift my black face, my black hand, hearing your names to curse this land you blessed in freedom evermore. I am black, I am black, and yet God made me, they say. But if he did so smiling back, he must have cast his work away under the feet of his white creatures with a look of scorn that the dusky features might be trodden again to clay. And yet he has made dark things to be glad and merry as light. There's a little dark bird sits and sings. There's a dark stream ripples out of sight. And the dark frogs chant in the safe morass. And the sweetest stars are made to pass over the face of the darkest night. But we who are dark, we are dark. Oh God, we have no stars about our souls and care and cart. Our blackness shuts like prison bars. The poor souls crouch so far behind. They never a comfort can they find. Be by reaching through the prison bars. And did we, we live beneath the sky, that great smooth hand of God stretched out on all his children fatherly to save them from the dread and doubt, which would be if from this low place all open straight up to his face into the grand eternity. And still God's sunshine and his frost, they make us hot, they make us cold, as if we were not black and lost, and the beast and birds and wood and fold do fear and take us for very men. Could the whipper willow or the cat of the glen look into my eyes and be bold? I am black, I am black, but once I laughed in girlish glee, from one of my colors stood in the track where the drivers drove and looked at me, and tender and full was the look he gave. Could a slave look so at another slave? I look at the sky and see. And from that hour our spirits grew as free as if unsold, unbought. Oh, strong enough since we were two to conquer the world, we thought. The drivers drove us day by day. We did not mind. We went one way and no better if freedom sought. In the sunny ground between the canes, he said, I love you as he passed. When the shingle roof rang sharp with the rains, I heard how he vowed it fast. While others shook, he smiled in the hut as he carved me a bowl of the coconut through the roar of the hurricanes. I sang his name instead of a song. Over and over I sang his name. Upward and downward I drew it along. My various notes, the same, the same. I sang it low that the slave girls near might never guess from aught they could hear. It was only a name, a name. I look on the sky and the sea. We were two to love and to pray. Yes, two, O oh God, who cried to thee, though nothing didst thou say. Coldly thou saidest behind the sun, and now I cry who am but one that wilt not speak today. We were black. We were black. We had no claim to love and bliss. What marvel if each went to rack? They wrung my cold hands out of his. They dragged him. Where? I crawled to touch. His blood marks in the dust. Not much. Ye pilgrim souls, though plain as this. Wrong followed by a deeper wrong. Mere grief's too good for such as I. So the white men brought the shame ere long to strangle the sob of my agony. They would not leave me for my dull wet eyes it was too merciful to let me weep pure tears and die i am black i am black i wore a child upon my breast an amulet that hung too slack and in my unrest could not rest thus we went moaning child and mother one to another one to another until all ended for the best for hark i will tell you lo lo i am black you see and the babe who lay on my bosom so was far too white too white for me as white as the ladies who scorned to pray beside me at the church but yesterday though my tears had washed a place for my knee. My own, own child, I could not bear to look in his face, it was so white. I covered him up with a chanker, a kerchief there. I covered his face in close and tight, and he moaned and struggled as well might be, for the white child wanted his liberty. Ha, ha, he wanted the master right. He moaned and beat with his head and feet, his little feet that never grew. He struck them out as it was me, against my heart to break it through. I might have sung and made him mild, but I dared not sing to the white-faced child, the only song I knew. 
I pulled the kerchief very close. He could not see the sun, I swear, more than alive than now he does from between the roots of the mango where, I know where, close. A child and mother do wrong to look at one another when one is black and one is fair.